All right, y'all, we have an amazing interview with Miss Maria here. Um, we're going to talk with her a little bit about her cro crochet story. Maria, thank you so very much for being willing to share your story. I am super of excited. Of course. Yeah, of course. Super, it's, super It's excited. really, you know, I think we think our stories aren't interesting. And one thing I learned from watching the other two that you did was, yeah, they're all interesting. Of course mm -hmm. it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you learn a little bit from everyone. So yes. I'm super excited to to get into your story today. How did you start crocheting? Like how old were you when you started? Crocheting? It was, okay, what's 49 minus 14? You're going to make me do math? <laughs> no. Um, uh, so here, let's see. Let me... Uh... <laughs> If you are interested in having your story told, I'm going to leave a link for the form in the description below, and I would love, love to hear your story. So, like, early 30s, um, okay. honestly, I'd always been into crafts and stuff. I had a stepmother that had uh, taught me how to sew um, on a machine and stuff like that, but it wasn't the most pleasant experience. So I didn't want to pursue getting into sewing more than I already am. I mean, I've got a machine and I can make pajamas or whatever, but, um, but I just really, the, the yarn, I wanted to work with yarn and, you know, crochet seemed, it seemed more accessible than knitting. Okay. Um, I've tried to knit before and I just would get so frustrated. Um, I knit now a little bit, a little bit. I but, see um, your little bits. I see yeah, your little bit. You just can we see your little bits? Sure. Yeah. The, <laughs> I little bit, y'all. Little bit. Li How cute is that? Oh my goodness. They just, it's like I've got to want to make something so bad that I'm willing to go through the process of, um, being reminded over and over again that I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so, it's, you know, like if I, can, <laughs> if I can get through that and produce this, you know, that and then, is so stinking cute. It's, I love, I love these. They're just <laughs> funny. Um, but it's amazing, even with something this small, how many ways there are to mess up and have to start over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an experienced knitter at all. Uh, but it's it's just it's a good reminder um that you know you're not born knowing these things and you've got to be patient with yourself. It's a process. It is, it <laughs> is a process. And some days, some days, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but some days it seems like that process is not so bad. It's actually fun. Yeah. You're into it, oh, and other great. days it's like God. yeah I can't. yeah I don't feel and it's, it it's a balance between you know is today a day that it'll be good but I don't really feel like it or is today a day that I'm just not even going to try to make myself yeah. do it that's right um, I don't want to turn it into a chore so I know that's right yes yeah but I do I like to challenge myself that. so yeah a challenge is always good so when you got yeah. into crochet you said you wanted to work yeah. with yarn what was it about oh. um so I did do a lot of drawing mostly and some painting when I was a kid and a teenager and the yarn I just wanted to be involved with it I, <laughs> it's the colors the textures the choices the sources where yarn comes from so many different sources that's right um around the world there's plants there's animals there's machines you know that make it um i was just so wanting to be involved with yarn and i had tried spinning and was like okay that's not gonna be for me yet <laughs> <laughs> that's another one of those challenges you got to be ready yeah. for <laughs> yeah it's like oh uh <laughs> But it's wonderful. I mean, it's amazing. And I'm really lucky to live near a place that um, offers lessons in spinning and weaving and textile making. And yeah, it's great. Eugene Textile Center in Oregon. It's wonderful. Uh, but Note to self. I, yeah, <laughs> right? <It's> an idea. <laughs> if you ever find yourself in Oregon, come on over. That's right. Um, but 
so so crochet was something that I could find on YouTube. I and so I wouldn't be embarrassed, you know, at a class where everybody else is like, you've never made a slip knot, really. Yeah. Or you, you know, you can't do that. I, and not that people usually really say things like that, but that the voice in my mind will say it for them. Well, yes. And I think I know because I started um, not as a child. <laughs> I yeah. think that was one of the biggest reasons that I went on YouTube as well. Not only did I not have anybody, but even if there were somebody here, I don't know that I would have felt comfortable. I think my age would have got in my way. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, what do you mean? You don't like, know. By the time you're a grown up, you're supposed to just know how to do these things, right? Right. Like, Simple. Like, what do you mean you don't know how to make soup or you don't know how to crochet or you don't know how to, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, no. It's, it doesn't work that way anymore. We're not out on the prairie. Um, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's just the yarn, the yarn and the tools. I'm like a tool nerd. So I love to, you know, what's that for? What can I do with that? How can I repurpose this other thing? What can I do? You know, but yeah. then you walk into a yarn store and it's like, it's like a candy store. It's just it so is. beautiful. And you can touch the things and you can, <laughs> you can smell them. <laughs> there is. Yes. Um, I'm yeah. glad you brought up the smell because yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> most definitely. Yeah. So like it really was book. this fascination with being able to create something in the color, texture, size that I could envision or that I saw a pattern and, you know, really just like, I want to make that. I want to be able to make that. I want to be one of these cool, special people that knows how to make things, you know, besides whatever, you know, I already knew Yeah, you know, with my real job, but um, I wanted to be one. I wanted to be able to do that. It was, it's like a magic power to me. That's awesome. That yeah. Is, it's awesome. fun. I'm lucky. I'm lucky to I be able to, so use my day job to support it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's awesome. I also really respect the fact that this is crochet is not like a business for you. No. At this point, no. do you think it ever will be? Is that where you see your journey going or not? So I much? don't. And not because I wouldn't want that because I think I, I would love it. I think that it wouldn't be practical given uh, what my hands felt like after I made a cardigan on a deadline. <laughs> um, I was making it for a friend for her birthday. I misjudged the amount of time I would need. And I was crocheting until the night before. And the next day, my a couple of my knuckles were just on fire. Oh, yeah. Um, and so there's that aspect. I could probably find a way to get past that and just set aside a certain number, you know, number of hours per day that I would crochet. But the fair price for handmade items, um, it doesn't seem like a lot of people agree about what fair pricing is. No, they don't. Um, because you can walk into Target and get a cardigan for 30 bucks. So, you know, a lot of people just look at it like that. Like, well, that's neat that you made that. But like, why? You know, yeah. like, what's the, you know, what's the big deal? Um, so I've definitely learned to only make things for people that really appreciate it. Yeah. And I make them for myself. First and foremost, it's because I want to. It's because I want to make this thing using this material, this tool, and my time it's just to art. be quiet and make it. <laughs> it's your art. It's no different, I think, than somebody who is painting or mm -hmm doing sculptures or things like that like if you can't envision it they, and it just can't can't be done I think every artist has their medium and this is just yeah out. for sure for sure and I cannot wait to get into uh adding some beading adding some oh, embroidery wow. I want to I want to make tiny sweaters that are beaded I want to make them custom. I have a client oh, right. who has a dog named Gus and I want to make one that has color work in it that has a G in there. I tried okay. the other day and it came out backwards. Um, <laughs> but, but, it, but it happened. It it's happened. Okay. <laughs> it backward. You know what? Dyslexia is a thing, right? And they say it's for kids, but I don't know about you. The older I get, the more backwards I get. 
Yeah, I made a map and everything, and and I didn't realize that if I followed my map, it was going to be a mirror image. So I just need to flip that. That's <laughs> so, right. That's yeah, right. But the you know it just I love I love being able to, and it's it just sounds so cheesy to me, but to make someone smile with something that you made or make someone go, oh, that's so pretty. I love it. That's the best it. feeling in the whole world. <laughs> yes. That's the best feeling in the whole world. And I'm, yeah, with my toys and my dolls and yes. Yeah. Let somebody light up because it's like, yeah. I mean, you can do it with store-bought stuff, but there's a difference. Totally. A there difference. is. Well, for, for most people, there is a difference. And I mean, I just had, it's so funny. This was a couple weeks ago. Um, a client of mine had given me a crocheted item she found on Amazon and it's adorable. It's this little potato with little glasses on and he's holding a sign and it says life was out of lemons. So here's a potato instead. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Adorable, very simple, very sweet, you know, but she knew that I liked crochet. So she thought of me. So I got this book uh, recently that has nothing to do with the client or anything like that, but uh, it had this pattern in it for a lemonade, a, gla- a glass of lemonade. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll make that for her and be like, they restocked the lemons. <laughs> um, because she had recently found out she was going to have to have unexpected surgery. So I thought, you know, maybe this kind of, you know, she flipped out. She flipped out. She, she, was, was, so <laughs> she was delighted. It was so nice. And so here I get to sit there and do something that I love to do for a couple hours. And then it also makes somebody else happy. Yes. Win-win. (laughs) Win-win. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. For sure. What are some things, and you briefly touched on it earlier. I think that's one of the things that you may say. Uh, But what are some things that you would, I guess, suggestions for somebody that's just starting their crochet journey? What kind of... I mean, what kind of advice would you have for somebody? Figure out what it is that you love about it. Is it the color? Is it the feel of the yarn? Is it the finished product? Is it the personal challenge of learning a new skill and then expanding it? Um, Because I feel like I could be content making nothing but granny squares the rest of my life because you can make bags and shirts and blankets and everything. And that's wonderful, you know? So like kind of try to start with the thing that you love most about it and focus on that. Like, do you love this particular yarn and you just want to make something pretty out of it? Or do you want to use as many colors as you can? And so you get, you're going to get that budget friendly yarn. You're going to get as many colors as you can and make something cool. Um, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, you know, and just, it it all comes down to, do you, do you want to learn this bad enough for what that reward is? Whether it's the smile on someone's face or it's, I, I made this, the satisfaction of, I made this. If that's what you're after, do it, but you're going to have to want it bad enough to humble yourself to it. Push through those days. And you're just like, ah, (laughs) Yeah, and I'm like, I want this work. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a recovering perfectionist, I guess you could say. Like, I'm trying. Um, but when you, you know, my job involves some permanent work um, on people's faces. So, <laughs> uh, so it's really, I had to learn through that too. There is no such thing as perfect. Not even our bone structure is, is, matching between the two sides of our face so how would you put something on there that's perfect it can only be perfect for you it's it's your face it's your art it's your craft it's your personality so whatever you're doing do it perfect for you not perfect for someone you saw on youtube or someone you saw in a commercial you know and it takes it takes patience to do it that way but it's so much better Awesome. Awesome (laughs) advice. Watching your other interview with Steph, I really, it dawned on me. I'm like, I wrote down appreciation versus expectation. Um, Because it is so easy to, with yourself or with other people, to go like, 
to be grateful when you when something is new and something is exciting and to start to expect it. Um, I thought, well, I've been crocheting so long. I mean, I can do this. No problem. I, I can just make this thing. Yeah. Back it up, lady. Um, <laughs> doesn't yes, always but, work like that. Don't expect. Don't expect. Yeah. It's just, or don't expect when you give somebody something that they're going to react a certain way. That's right. I always appreciate when people love my work, regardless of what type it is. That's right. But I always remind myself, don't expect that either because they see it differently than you do, or they don't realize what went into it, or they are shocked. <laughs> right. And <laughs> shock, sometimes, shock comes out different. They could be shocked yeah. in a different way, and it might not come across that way. Don't take it personally. Exactly. Exactly. You know, at, at the end of an appointment, if somebody looks in the mirror and they don't go, I love it. Like, don't freak out. <laughs> it's personalities. Um, right. Some of my most loyal clients are some of my most stone faced clients. Um, and same when you give somebody a gift, you know, it's you don't know what it means to them because you're not inside them right. experiencing it. Um, maybe you true. will never know and maybe they'll tell you later. but you got to do it because you want to not because you want because you expect a certain result that's true i'm glad you brought that up i had Ooh. i had not thought of that honestly yeah, yeah that, that was good that was a good point cool <laughs> yeah i learned I that every just, day <laughs> yeah <laughs> um it's it's interesting i mean if you want to be happy and peaceful it's <laughs> It's not about what everybody else is doing. It's about finding how to be happy, and peaceful. And then it's a bonus when that makes other people happy. And that at least that's where I'm at right now. Yes. Oops. And I agree. I agree. <laughs> the whole not wanting to be because everybody's crochet journey is so so avidly different. You know, <laughs> you can have two crocheters that all they do is the granny stitch, but they're going to produce completely different things. You know, some people want a business. Some people don't. Some people, you know, don't even give it away. They just keep what they have. And some people give everything away. Do you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You have two mm -hmm. business owners and they're not going to be doing the same thing, even though it's crochet. So I yeah. think that's, that's interesting yeah. to limit yourself or try to be like others because it's it is yeah so i think steph brought up a really good thing the whole um solidarity but yes it's also solitary right yes because it is your own unique individual journey yes yeah and it's really hard because you see these beautiful things and you want to emulate them and you see you know there's there's such a wide range of choices and images out there and ways of learning and yarn maker and everything it, there's so much it can get overwhelming and make you know there's things that I just want to turn away and go like why am I even why am I doing this nobody cares um but I care and then That's it's fun. a bonus when somebody else cares you know yeah. I care I was I know that I can look at something and go I made that That's I made that ha I did that. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Look at what I did. And it's nice too having those things, even if the even if it's not anything to do with anybody else. It's really nice because everybody has days um when they can't get the stitches to line up right and their count isn't working right or something like that. So when you are able to look at something that you have previously completed. And be like, I did that. So maybe I'm just having a bad day today. You know what yes. I mean? Practice makes better. Or um, practice Practice does not make perfect. Um, I Again, that's another overlap between my actual job and the yarn stuff is like, you can have all the flashy marketing type stuff you want. You can have the most perfect backdrop and the most perfect lighting and the most perfect little project that you can show somebody. Um but that's only going to, that's only going to get you about this far. <laughs> it's the right. consistency. It's the care. 
that will pay off in the long run. And it's not the funnest because it's not an instant gratification thing. Right. But it does work the best. Um, people freak out, you know, in in my industry and I think in in the yarn world that, you know, well, I tried and I really worked really hard and it didn't come out right. Yeah. Yeah. That that's normal. It happens. <laughs> it, it does happen. Yeah. But that in an in and of itself is beautiful. I, I am a perfectionist yeah. myself. And what I'm finding is there is <clears throat> there is beauty in imperfection. There totally. is an amazing amount of joy in a good frog. You know what I'm saying? Like when you just you're I'm done and you're ripping it out. There is yeah. something to be said for messing up to the point that you have to rip out the whole thing. Yeah, it feels it's a really good. it's like it's like okay, fine. Okay. It's like <laughs> let's try this again. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, then guess what? I'll rip it out again because it's right. fun. At yeah. first it doesn't feel fun, but if you yeah. allow yourself to just enjoy even the not so seemingly great stuff, yeah. there's joy to be found there too. Absolutely. And that's been a huge that's been a huge thing for me because, you know, I'm still, I'm still working a job. And so I feel like my time off is so, you know, oh my God, I just wasted two hours. <laughs> and so I'm still struggling with that feeling of like, I just wasted two hours. Wow. Okay. Um, I should at least do some laundry so I can feel productive today or whatever. But it, the, the peace that you can make with your own process is, is priceless. I have found that there are lessons that we learn through crochet and through, I mean, even through life too, everything kind of intersects yes. and is transferable to other areas of your life. Yes. Are there any others? You're full of a ton of insights today. Like I, you know, I try, Ooh. I try. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, you know what, on my days off, I can, I can talk a lot more because I'm used to talking all day at work. So when I'm, you know, got a day off, I can just, blah, 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 you know, anything that you do with sincerity is worth doing regardless of the outcome. So okay, yeah. if I'm sincerely, I just love this yarn. I just love this pattern. I just love to do somebody's eyebrow. I just love to uh, make some, make somebody happy by doing their nails or something. If I start from a sincere place then there's really nothing to lose. I'm I am being wisely selfish because I'm doing what I want. Like sincerely, I'm doing what I want to do. And then Bring yay, I can benefit others by doing that. Like really? um so that I mean that makes me super happy and fulfilled, you know, That's both right. leisure yeah. time, work time, whatever. The reason that I do my job and the reason I do yarn stuff is because I want to. And I know not everybody has that luxury. I mean, I feel really lucky. You, you are. You might yeah. have to tell me the whole time I was growing up, find something that you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life. That's not true. No, it's not. No, it's, it's not. Because when you put the pressure on it, all of a sudden it is work and it does Absolutely. kind of steal a little bit of joy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, no, I don't it want can. to say it steals. It doesn't steal all of the joy. No. But it it shifts things. Yes. You know what I And then I'm you've saying? got to renegotiate with yourself like, what do I love about this? And I'm not going to forget what I love about this while I do the stuff I have to do. I have to do because everything, everything. And that's with a job or a hobby or whatever. There are always aspects of having any given thing that you're not going to like to do. Absolutely. I love a clean house. I freaking hate doing dishes. I'm not going to lie. Right. I hate right. doing dishes. Yeah. Yeah, I would totally. rather scrub a toilet than I would like to do dishes. Like I hate doing dishes. <laughs> it's one of those yes. necessary evils, right? Totally. Um, totally. So uh, cleaning up my yarn also, I don't, I like having yarn everywhere. Is that odd? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I'm a, I'm definitely like OCD type A, 
whatever you want to call it. And um, I love to organize things. I used, I remember my dad when I was four and we're in a grocery store and he's picking out what he's going to get. And I'm over here down a couple shelves, organizing the Campbell's soup cans, straightening them up. And he said Hmm. to stop, you know, don't do, don't do that. You're not buying those. Don't touch those, but I'm helping. (laughs) I want to fix them. I just want to make it look nice. (laughs) So I, I don't know why, uh, maybe it's from living with my grandmother from an early age. Um, and she was very, as she would say, fastidious. Um, Okay. Okay. That's not a word I'm used to hearing. Yeah. It's um, been a very long time. I don't think very many people she, know we're yeah. here for. <laughs> <laughs> she said to me when I was like 18, I think, she she was organizing her sock drawer and putting laundry away. And I was like, Grandma, why don't you just put your just put your socks in the drawer? Like, why do you have to worry about it? And she was like, You wait later on in your life. You're gonna think of your grandma and you're gonna remember she was so fastidious. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right, Granny. That's true. But also very nervous and high strung and stressed out. Um, so again, it's like, well, it's great to be detailed and organized, but don't let it wreck you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> don't let it so don't not. let it stress you out. Organize I call it disorganized organization. Yeah. Because to the outside, you know, viewer, <laughs> anybody steps into my area and they're gonna be like, how what in the world you've got yarn strung from hell to breakfast in here Mm -hmm. but i'll bet you i can tell you exactly where anything is i know where everything is yeah i know exactly it's disorganized but it is organized i know where yeah there's a what do they say a method to the madness yes yeah yes or what appears crazy to somebody else is absolutely not to another this is where i have this this is where i have that Mm-hmm. what you know i don't think i What's mean the, problem? What the, problem the only is? odd thing is don't you have a dog does i the do dog like to pick up balls of yarn and carry them no, around? he actually does not mess with my yarn <gasps> at all perfect i There's know it's problem. amazing i don't know how i lucked out yeah there <laughs> is like okay so i have these bins kind of mm-hmm. like bit, all right well i keep projects in my bins Yes. Sometimes I'm working on, I'm not even going to embarrass myself by saying how many projects I'm working oh. at this given moment. But yeah. the point is, I've got products or projects that I work on here in my office. Yep. Uh, I've got projects that I work on in the living room because they're different. What I work on in here is detailed stuff. You know, Yes. when I'm sitting in the living room, yeah. I only go in there when I my brain is done. Yes. I cannot focus. Um, so paying attention to increases and decreases and oh. you do this and you do that and you and shaping amigurumi not yep. gonna happen when I'm out there. Like not right. right. It's when I just want to make just just crochet to crochet. I, I've yeah. got to be doing something with my hands. I can't yeah. not be. Yep. Um it's either that or smoking a cigarette. Sometimes both, but we're just not even going to get into that. <laughs> For me, it's either that or biting my nails. I've been a nail yeah. biter since I was three. Yeah, I used to do that too. Yeah. I used to do that too. Um, yep. <laughs> so I have several going on in there and it depends on who's in my house, what I'm going to yeah. work on. Do yeah. you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like got, I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Details. Yeah. So there are times when I'm I'm in here working. And I've got my my little bin sitting next to me and I'll just crochet and whatever. Well, Rusty will come in here and then he'll turn around and somehow his snout or <laughs> his tail or something tail. The yarn and it's all the way in the living room. And I'm like, oh crap. Write yep. it back in, write it back in. Yeah. But he doesn't mess with my stuff, which is nice. That's great. Nice. Then yeah, I mean, there's only a problem if there's a problem, right? Like That's right. Like, who cares if, if, if it's weird, like, what does weird even mean? What does normal mean? What is normal? If it's not broken, don't fix it. You know, that's right. (laughs) Work, work how it works for you, you know, and Uh. if you're finding that you're getting messed up, 
then then yeah, maybe there's something to fix. But so here's a question I just thought of. I'm yeah. just gonna throw it out there. Okay. Uh, how do you organize your um works in progress? No. Oh. Organize those. How do you keep them all? So it has evolved. I used to just wad up whatever I had and put the hook in there and put the ball in there and wrap whatever I was working on around that and leave it in a little safe pile somewhere. <laughs> um, but I have I have gotten to the point where I use these um, semi-clear organza bags that are not expensive and they're totally reusable. Um, they have the drawstring at the top. Want me to grab one? I can just show you. Yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. <laughs> okay, so this is embarrassing, though, because I started this blanket two years ago. Um, and I bought all the yarn for it. And it's lovely, but there's only about eight inches of it done. Um, but it's like this. And I've got oh, my okay. yarn all set and everything. And it was yarns the way that Butter the pattern yarn. was. Where did written. you get those mm, the things that your balls of yarn are in? Where did oh, you get them? Yeah, okay. So Joanne and Michaels usually have these, um, but not always. Not always. They were having a sale and I picked up a handful of them, but they're great because they're these big, nice jars with a hole in yes. the top. Yes. So I can take this in the car. I can oh, that's create awesome. my yarn with it so they don't and get in a fight. <laughs> and that works whether it's the outside or the inside pole, it'll even yes it's big enough to even hold one of the yes. jump up skeins, huh? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, but the blanket is only there's only this much. Oh, of that's it. pretty. <laughs> much of it done. But yeah, I mean, it's beautiful and I'll finish it someday. That's but right. you know, it's like Ooh, it's wavy. Yes, reminiscent of the beach. Yes. It's a design that um, Expression Fiber Arts, Shandy at Perf Expe Expression Fiber Arts, released a couple of years ago. And I fell in love with it. I bought the I whole thing it. and started it. And uh, here's here's where we are. And that's it. Actually, it looks bigger on camera than it really is. Um, it is big. It, it's, it's, it's getting so pretty. Thank you. Yeah. And it feels great. I can't wait to finish it. But obviously... I can wait because it's been two years. So whatever. You know, sometimes um, you have to be in the right head space. Yes. The right home space. Yes. The right company space in order yes. to work on certain projects. Like there's a lot that goes into it. Exactly. Exactly. I love that bag so, though. So yeah. So, so you keep your you hook in package. there too? What's that? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Put the hook in there. And usually I don't put jars in these bags, but because of the nature of this project, I have a, a, my yarn already in the jars. Um, right. So I'll use one of these or a smaller one and put it in there. And I know I've got my pattern, my hook, my yarn, and whatever's been already done together at least. Ooh, I like that. So do you have anything written as far as what row you're on, what... Because I know there has been so many, I have, I don't want to say has been, because yeah. there are yeah. several over here that I cannot, and I can't bring myself to frog them because they're beautiful, but I can't remember the stitch. I can't remember <laughs> which number count that I was on. I don't even remember what hook I was at because I only have just the one set. So I don't okay. put my hooks in with, but yeah. I in mind all Man. of my wisdom um <laughs> i can't remember what hook i was using or so this is for stuff you're designing no 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 no. this okay. was before i started designing like this is stuff from way back when i started okay that so, i you know you evolve you said it earlier you absolutely in your process evolve. absolutely yeah yeah you yeah. learn things like you probably should write stuff down totally Totally. So, um, I tend to, I'll, I'll, if I'm really going to make something and I know that I've, you know, I'm starting it, I'm going to really do it. I'll print out the pattern or at least one page of it okay. and make notes on the front page, you know, what, what size hook, what yarn was I using? What gauge? 
Um, and then I've got the pattern itself to refer to. Anyway, I'll have things, I'll have things written at least on a, even a post-it that I throw in there okay. with it. Um, just so that I don't drive myself it completely crazy. And it's not one of those ones that goes so stale that you just go, you know what? I'm going to let this, I'm going to donate the yarn. I'm going to cut my losses and just, just end it, you know, especially if it's, you know, if it's a yarn or a project that you really like, you just haven't touched it in a while. Um, so yeah, I'll put a few notes in there with whatever the project is. You have a lot that needs to be heard. Like I got a lot out of this, a lot out of this interview. So thank cool. you so, thank you. so very much. Yeah. For agreeing to be here today. That just makes my heart so happy. Um, me too. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming on today. Of course. Just, just wishing you success and, uh, watch, watch for some happy mail here pretty soon. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I am too kind of gone. yes good 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 I mean I send it with no expectations obviously but I'm pretty sure it'll make you pretty happy so that's fun well thank you <laughs> thank you very much of course all right y'all stick all around right. next week I will get with you again and we've got some amazing interviews coming up if you are interested in having your story told, I'm going to leave a link for the form in the description below. And I would love, love to hear your story. All right. All right.